Already this hospital, like most major A&Es, is having to treat patients on trolleys. We're struggling to get patients admitted into the hospital, um, so that means unfortunately they have to wait um, in the emergency department and obviously we've got a, a limited amount of space and once we're full in the cubicles, patients have to wait on the corridor. The overcrowding makes life difficult for both the patients and the staff treating them. It can be overwhelming. Obviously you're trying to keep all the patients safe. Um, as consultants, um, us and the nurse in charge do a um, ward round of the whole department every three hours. That's not something we're used to doing in A&E, that's something traditionally done on a ward. It's not what we want, but that's what we have to do in busy times. So they're here because the rest of the hospital is so full? Yeah, yeah. so that um, patients are waiting for beds and they're having to wait with us because they can't get into the beds on the wards because they're full. Last month here, more than 1,100 people waited more than the government's target of four hours for a bed. 81 of them waited more than 12 hours, eight times more than two years ago. There's no doubt some patients do stay too long in the department. You always apply your, your parents' tests, really. What would you want for your parents? So it's not what we want, but it is a, a barometer of that pressure that we're facing. Can you just give me that name again, please? Much of that pressure is being dealt with here by the bed managers. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing for him at the moment. Their jobs to find the beds where patients can potentially leave, freeing it up for somebody in A&E. We are checking in with all the different divisions and checking in with the wards about their current bed capacity, uh, both what they have available now, what they have discharge-wise later on today, um, and what they are predicting to have. And how's it looking at the moment? We have got a number of patients in our emergency department still waiting for beds. Um, and they have been for a significant amount of time, but we are confident that we will get them in uh, within the next um, couple of hours. We just have a little bit of a safety huddle before our bed meeting. We just have a catch up where we are. Kim's team have found 50 beds where patients theoretically don't need to be there. They'll now work with teams on the wards to try to provide the support those patients need to go elsewhere and that would be our ideal situation, <laughs> that uh, we would have an A&E department by the end of play tonight with reasonable numbers and no bed weights. How often does that happen at the moment? Not very often, no, if I'm honest. The main problem is that older patients in particular often need support from social care to get out of hospital, either in their own home or in a care home. But the social care sector's in the worst position it's been for years, underfunded and missing thousands of staff. The whole system's overloaded, so we're then struggling to get people out into the community and back home. But it's been really difficult. Covid numbers have been comparatively low here recently, but even then the need to isolate patients means it has a big impact, particularly in critical care. For the last few months still half of our normal bed base has been um, dealing with, with Covid and the complications of it. So still? It, it still has a significant um, effect on our critical care resource. That's not going to change anytime soon. Uh, we very much hope it won't get worse. The government's now asking all hospitals to empty as many beds as possible in the expectation of another wave. No one quite knows what's coming next. Every winter is tough in the NHS and we have well established plans how we deal with those pressures. I do think it's a winter plus, to be honest with you. Uh, we have got discharges on B6. It is relentless. People are poorly, our acuity is quite high and yeah, it's, it's a challenge every single day, 24 hours a day. Jill Domigan, BBC Northwest Tonight at the Royal Blackburn.